Every time I look at this stuff, I remember the RTX 2080. What to do? I already saw one kidney for the Titan XP. Oi, never mind wo. Sha still has two kidneys, huh? Oi, someone sent you a GPU eh? <gasps> That's right, today we'll be reviewing the brand spanking new RTX 2080. The RTX series reminds me a lot of the double guess. Oh my god. When you ask your kaka, I want to eat fried chicken, she go to the wet kitchen, she fry. You obviously don't know what you're talking about, okay? Because it looks awesome. I'm pretty sure they took ages cooking it in R&D. Get it? Unfortunately, we don't have a Founders Edition card with us today, but what we have is the MSI GeForce RTX 2080 Gaming X Trio priced at 4,200 ringgit or 829 US dollars per dasakanxe.com. That's quite a bit more expensive than the GTX 1080 when it first launched, right? It's at about 3,300 ringgit. So we sure do hope that this card would give us a lot more juice and a lot more performance for the bang of our buck. Let's check it out right after this. We spend most of our lives on the internet. We watch movies, we listen to music, and we play games. The internet is a space for us to be free and do whatever we like, so it should never be restricted. In fact, it's thanks to DG that you're watching this video right now. DG gives you the freedom to internet your way any day. More details in the description section below. In terms of aesthetics, as you can see, this is the old GTX 1080 and this is the new RTX 2080. They have gone and removed all the red from this card and put it on Sha shirt and my cap. So there's no more red, red shroud and all the red lighting. It's which a we bit more thought, fresh. Yes, it's quite problematic for RGB builds. Now it's sleek, it's new, it's nice, it's very nice. Firstly, this RTX 2080 Gaming X Trio is beefy as hell at 327mm long, 140mm wide, and 55.6mm thick. Taking up three expansion slots, so make sure that you get a chassis that fits. It has the same Trifrozer 3 fan thermal design, but the shroud has been revamped. It now has a two-tone gun metal and black design instead of a completely black one. Gone are the red accent lighting, and also the illuminated MSI logo on the side is quite a bit bigger, so RGB fans rejoice, like the shampoo. At the back, they've completely revamped the back plate, which is now gun metal instead of black. And they removed the RGB bling bling from the back and they've made their logo much smaller. You know what they say? Less is more. In terms of connectivity, the RTX 2080 Gaming X Trio uses dual 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Moving on to the I.O., we have three DisplayPort version 1.4, a single HDMI 2.0B, and finally, USB Type-C. Did you see that coming? Okay, let's take a look at the specs. In comparison to the Pascal GTX 1080, the Turing RTX 2080 has a new 12 nanometer process instead of a 16 nanometer, almost double the amount of transistors at 13.6 billion. The die size is quite a bit bigger at 545 millimeters square. B. The core and the boost clock remains quite identical. In terms of shaders, you now have like 15% more at 2,944. In terms of giga flops, you have 19% more at 10,598. And now we have the new tensor cores. We have like 368 of them and 46 RT cores, which are not existent in the GTX. 1080. So memory size and memory bus remain the same at 8 gigabytes and 256 bits. Mm -hmm. Now memory type has changed, which is now the GDDR6 versus the 1080's GDDR5X. Memory speed has increased as well, 14 gigabits per second against 10 gigabits per second on the 1080. Memory bandwidth has increased significantly at 40%, and now we are at 448 gigabytes per second compared to the 1080 at 320. ROPs remain identical, but texture units have increased slightly at 184 against 160. 60 on the 1080. Now L2 cache has doubled up to 4096 versus 2048 on the 1080. Now power connectors have increased slightly, which is 8 pin plus 6 pin, which means you need a 14 pin on the 2080 versus the 8 pin only on the 1080. Now there's an increase in TDP about 20%, which explains the two fan design yeah. versus the yes. 180 watt TDP on the FE4 1080. Now the launch price for the 2080 was 699 US dollars, but the founder's edition design is really 
retail at 799 US dollars versus yeah. the 549 US dollar price tag on the 1080, which was obviously revised. Yeah, it's revised from 699 during launch. Moving on! Before we move on to the benchmark, let's talk about a couple of new features on the RTX series. Firstly, what exactly is ray tracing? It's a simulation of light interacting with the world space in games and other simulated environments. This tech isn't exactly new. In architecture, for instance, we need to render 3D scenes where you illustrate the effects of natural and artificial lighting on the design space, objects, and the way different kinds of materials or textures react to lighting through reflections and refractions. However, we were mostly working with steel frames and they still took ages to render. Real-time ray tracing on personal computers like this? That was all a dream. Until now, that is. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about DLSS. For very simple-minded people like me, DLSS, also known as Deep Learning Subsampling, is the highlight of the new RTX. Well, besides ray tracing, of course. In order to understand what DLSS is, let's take a look at NGX. The software-based neural graphics acceleration, also known as NGX, uses deep neural network, DNN, to perform AI functions to accelerate and enhance graphics and other client-side applications with a new Turing tensor course. DLSS is the specific DNN model responsible for solving issues like blurring and transparency along with TAA. You can either make things look better by putting in more samples or give you visual results similar to TAA at basically half the performance cost. Lastly, Let's take a look at NVIDIA Scanner, your one-touch button for GPU overclocking built for noobs like Sha. Okay, I'm not exactly an expert either, so yeah. Basically, it examines your card's frequency slash voltage curve by running a mathematical algorithm that looks for single slash multi-bit failures to aim for stable performance with different clock speeds. Traditionally, you will need to adopt the small speed increase test, rinse, and repeat method, and this will make things go a hell lot faster. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do much testing on ray tracing and also DLSS nope. because two of the biggest titles that promise support isn't available yet. So Battlefield 5 is scheduled to be launched in November, but they're still in a battle, so if they win the battle, they come back. Lah. Uh, no shadow of the Tomb Raider, Lara Croft is still on a holiday in Phuket, Correct. so that's why there's no update yet. I'm sorry. Really disappointing because these are the features that we really, really look forward to, to testing with the RTX series. and now we we cannot test it, so it's kind of potong steam. Yeah. Anyways, all we get is the DLSS enabled Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, but it's a really controlled test, so we have no idea how it will work in real world situations with the new features. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna do separate videos on all the other cool features, including NVIDIA Scanner, so stay tuned for that. For now, let's take a look at some benchmarks. Here are the specs of our test bench. We have 8700K running at 5 GHz on an MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon with 32 GB of Team Nighthawk DDR for memory running at 3200 megahertz and a 512 gigabyte Samsung 960 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. We're also using a Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L all-in-one cooler and a 1250 watt Thermaltake Tough Power IRGB Plus PSU rated at 80 plus titanium. Pretty good numbers, man. Correct. So let's talk about the pros and cons or the things that you like and dislike about the RTX 2080. And as usual, let's talk about the pros first. Okay, firstly, the performance has been significantly improved. Think about this as a 1080 Ti equivalent with some new features. It's about 8 to 10% more performance out of this card versus the 1080 Ti, especially if you're using those tasks that uh, utilize the new Tensor and the RT cores. You're gonna see more out of that. And second, Secondly, the ray tracing is good to have. I mean, it's not good. It's great to have, but we can't see much on it, so I can't yet comment on it much. The USB-C is a good addition. It's a new addition, and it's pretty cool. It's because it's USB-C. 
Lastly, let's what? talk about the NVIDIA scanner. It's a very easy way for us noobs to overclock our GPUs. So that's good because everybody now can be PC masterized and overclock their graphics card. But anyway, <laughs> the things that I, I kind of dislike about it, or well, not really dislike, the cons in a way, is yeah. the TDP number one. It's about 20% higher and it's kind of obvious in our results because it get quite hotter over time. Even with the tree fan design. Yes, yeah. even with the tree fan design, it consumes about 6 to 7% more power. Mm. But to be honest, I think it's still pretty okay. Pretty, Sensible. Pretty accessible. Acceptable uh, as for now, but what I know a lot of people will not be too happy about is that the price. Okay. It's still gonna cost more than a 1080 tie when it was launched. Yeah, this card is launching for 200, which 4, is 4,200 oh, ringgit lah, 4,200 4,200 ringgit, which is about 600 ringgit more, 500 ringgit more than the 1080 Ti when it was launched. So a lot of people won't be happy about it, and I don't blame you because now we can't see a lot of tests on the ray tracing and DLSS. So it's justified. not so justified. Yeah, it's because those features will I I feel justified. We can't really you know, see the value. However, um, I do think that is a huge step forward. There's a lot of potential for the 2 series, the yeah. RTX series, now and the future. So we give this an 8 out of 10. So if you like this video guys, give it a big thumbs up. And of course, hit subscribe if you have not and drop us a comment down below. If you have any other questions regarding the RTX and links of this card and any other information about RTX in the description section below. And we'll see you in the next one.